All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a fight review. We're going to Independence, Missouri for FAC 16. We're going to the straw weight division. L. Wagman, undefeated at 5 0, taking on Selena Haga, coming in at 13 and 18. The biggest step up of young L. Wagman's career. I was looking forward to this fight because I had some misgivings about the matchmaking. I even talked about it on an episode of the WMA Report. And uh, pretty much turned out kind of how I thought it might. So let's go ahead and get into the fight itself. So first round, uh, Wagman worked the steady one-twos, and uh, Haga worked her low kicks. I felt that Wagman was getting the better of the striking. She had the cleaner punches. Um, each took turns moving forward, though, so, you know, they each had aggression working for him. Uh, Haga caught a double leg takedown at about 3 minutes 30 seconds. Uh, to Wagman's half guard. From there, Haga worked a pass, land a little light ground and pound until the end of the round. Second round, a Haga single leg takedown at about 30 seconds, so really didn't waste time getting it to the ground. Uh, Wagman uh, latched on a guillotine from the single leg and uh, used it to sweep to top position. Uh, Haga kept her guard open, hunted for the triangle, but uh, Wagman was well aware of it and managed to stay clear. From there, Haga threw up an omoplata. Uh, Wagman rolled, but that roll allowed Haga to take top position to side control. Uh, from there, Haga landed some short elbows and then moved to north-south position. Uh, Wagman rolled again, uh, and Haga managed to take her back. From there, Haga got the hooks in, sunk in the rear naked choke, and it was pretty darn deep. Got to give her credit there, but to Wagman's credit, you know, she successfully you know, fought the hands of Haga, got out of the choke, but by then Haga had moved from, you know, the double hooks to a body triangle with the legs, and Wagman was stuck there for whatever short amount of time was left in the second round. Then we get to the third round, and uh, Wagman, she, sh she struck to get to the clinch against the fence, and then Wagman tried to get a throw of Haga, and I'm not sure, quite sure what went wrong, but Wagman basically threw herself on her head and allowed Haga to uh, get herself to get on top. So I'm not sure if Haga just successfully countered or if Wagman just executed it wrong, but it really backfired. Wagman hit her head. Haga landed up on top. From there, Haga moved to north-south position and then uh, went into side control. Now, Wagman was able to regain guard, but Haga passed the half again. And then there was some ground and pound by Haga, but it was a pretty conservative ground and pound. Haga's game was mostly about maintaining uh, good positioning more than it was going for ground and pound. Um, Haga did go, went back to half guard again, and uh, Wagman was just stuck on bottom. No matter what she did, she was just absolutely stuck on bottom. Uh, nice elbow landed by Haga. Uh, Wagman scrambled, but Haga was able to then trap her in the turtle position uh, and then try to take the back. Now, Wagman was able to escape back control, but she was still stuck on bottom. And uh, some more light ground and pound from Selena Haga. And uh, Wagman just trying to basically explode out from the position at that point. Like, that was basically her last resort was just try to explode out of the position. But Haga stayed heavy on top. I mean, really good, heavy top control by Selena Haga. So it went to the judges. All three saw it, 30 to 27 for the winner by unanimous decision, Selena Haga. And uh, this was not a great display of positional grappling by Selena Haga. I mean, she had good posture, good weight distribution, stayed heavy on the hips. And she absolutely made sure that she had uh, established control before passing or moving on to another position. So really good example of good positional grappling, uh, which is important. You know, we far too many fighters, especially in the women's divisions, they don't focus on gaining proper positional control. And they just want to move from position to position to look for a finish. 
and then they often lose control of the fight doing that. So this was a good example of a veteran who knew to maintain good positioning. Uh, another note I have here is that size matters. Now this was Wagman's first fight at strawweight. She had moved up from atom weight. And while the size difference wasn't huge, it was noticeable. It was noticeable. Like, like you could tell that Haga was the bigger fighter. And I mentioned this earlier that I had my misgivings about the matchmaking in this bout. And I did. I thought it was questionable matchmaking. To this point, Wagman was undefeated at 5-0, and oh, but she had never faced an opponent with a winning record. And she had not faced anyone with near the experience of Selena Haga. Haga came into this fight with six times the experience of Wagman. And, uh, you know, I called this weird matchmaking bad matchmaking when it was made. Um, it seemed like FAC was trying to make the local star Wagman. She trains in Florida, but she, she's from Missouri. It seemed like they tried to make the local star uh get a bigger name like a much more experienced name and you know they tried to make Haga like sort of like the feather in Wagman's cap and it kind of blew up in their face not kind of it absolutely blew up in their face I mean kind of bad Wagman is six fights in she's five and one still hasn't faced an opponent with a winning record uh, who knows what they'll do now and I have a feeling that this was an attempt by FAC and probably Wagman and her team to possibly get the UFC's attention. Because anytime you see an atom weight move up to straw weight, it, usually they make the statement or the intentions to get noticed by the UFC known. Plus, this event was on UFC Fight Pass. It's a good possibility. But if so, it, again, it, it kind of blew up in their face. So, really questionable matchmaking. Anyway, let's talk things to work on real quick. For Celine Haga, the jab. She really does not have a jab, and her striking after all these years is still very basic. A, a good jab is not... Okay, a good jab is hard to develop, but a basic jab, or even a decent jab, is something that can be worked on very easily. Uh, for Wagman, that throw. Again, I'm not sure what went wrong. Maybe it was just Haga successfully uh, countering it. But that throw that Wagman tried to throw, I mean, she basically landed on her on her own head and gave up positioning. So work on that. Now for fights to make, you know, these two are both on the regional circuit. So Haga especially never seems to fight for the same promotion more than one time in a row or one or two times in a row. So I don't really have any fights to make. I will say, though, Wagman needs to go back to Adam Weight, and she has since acknowledged it on an Instagram post. So it looks like she'll be going back to Adam Weight. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this fight. Selena Haga scoring a unanimous decision against L. Wagman at FAC 16. You can see the fight on UFC Fight Pass. Go ahead and check it out. And then come back and let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Now, if you liked the video, please give it a like. Share it as well. That helps spread the word and helps the channel grow. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to WMA Scene Now, the best, most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.